So where where's Boogie at? He's he's still. He'll come in here in a minute. Who the fuck is he? He needs his entrance, man. Let him let him present his entrance. You can't just have the Boogie Pop assassin just be on camera. He's gotta you know. When he's damn ready, he'll get here. Yeah! Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined right now by the Boogie yeah, Pop Assassin! Yeah. Woo! What's up, dude? How are you doing? Good evening. How are you? I am fantastic. Thanks for joining. Uh... We've never done one of these on stream before, so if you could, could you guys properly introduce yourself? Uh, let us know where in the bouts, uh, whereabouts in the world you are right now, and plug or promote anything you, that you would like. What did? Uh, well, I just put it this way: we're in Metro Detroit, in an undisclosed location. The well, last person at a location was actually Jimmy Hoffa, and we can't ask him. He's been missing since 1974. Actually, uh, uh, being serious for legal reasons, uh, I'm not allowed to disclose what part of Michigan I am or exactly where I'm staying at, but I am in the state of uh, Michigan uh, pretty much. Uh, we're, we're at a real good uh, rehearsal studio where all the big guys uh, rehearse at. We're rocking out with our out. And, uh, but we're having a uh, a good, good time here in Detroit, Michigan. Can you know. PG and I come hang out? Huh? Uh, you better come hang out. <laughs> I'm gonna come out here if you don't. We got VIP. Yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah uh, you're always on my guest list. <laughs> for those that that may not know your guys' music before we before we start the questions and stuff, uh, I want to go ahead and start with the song called Break These Change. But Boogie, can you can you tell everybody what this song means to you? Yeah, well I was hoping you'd do pissing on the beast, but if you if you I'll, I'll play that one I'll change. play I'll play that one also. I'll play that one also. We're sorry, man. But there's just so many good songs we didn't know where to start. <laughs> I'm gonna have to if I'm if I'm if I'm gonna have to make a trip to come up there and talk to you. Uh, no 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 man please don't well don't <laughs> talk to me. I'll hang out with you. Yeah that's all right. I'm down with that. Uh, break the chains. Uh, well, uh, I think it was a song about uh, bad habits that I had. Uh, I had to seek the guidance of God. I'm not ashamed of it to break those chains, and uh, He helped me through a lot of bad things. Uh, but now, if you want to play pissing on the beast, that that's going to rock a little harder, you know. But Heard. Whatever you want to play. Tell me what pissing on the beast means, then. You're insisting, so we're going to play it out. What does this one mean to you, then? Pissing on the beast? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to put this in, uh, in a nice way as possible without getting FBI agents knocking on my door. Uh, pissing on the beast is about... Uh, I didn't expect this question... It's about uh, how America, the United States of America, shouldn't accept a tyrannous government. I have my First Amendment right, my freedom of speech, and if you don't like it, uh, I have 10 friends of mine, and they all fit in another friend called Smith and Wesson. Ooh, That's, <laughs> That's exactly, and it's, and, and it's about uh, uh, people who have committed treason in this country who make billions of dollars and profit from us, yet they oh. make the damn rules. That's what pissing on the beast is. Let's go! Let's go. Hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. I love you, bro. Let's fucking go. You got me juiced up. Hell yeah. So since you're our guest, we're going to automatically... Like you, Boogie, you would do a mean cover of Ace of Spades, bro. I hear that. <laughs> Well, if you like gamble, I'll show you I'm your man. I don't know, something like that. Let's go. The ace of spades. <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't, I don't know how uh, 
Are you getting the whole shot in this screen? No, outside? it looks it looks a lot better now. It looks a lot better now. Does it look a lot better now? Yes. Okay, all right. Bro, you was looking good from the start, baby. Don't worry, dude. You know? <laughs> it's Thank hard you. to get a screen. Thank you, though. kind sir. You know? He so, needs to screen time better. <laughs> Boogie, last time last time we talked, you you broke the news of the new album title. Can can you retell us what what that is and let us know any updates that you may have going on on, the, on some new music? Well, uh, the album we are just going to go into the studio at a later time uh, to record, but uh, the name of the album is going to be. The All American Psychedelic Slut Monkey. Let's go! I love it. I love it. Yeah! I that is a bumper sticker, bro. The All American <laughs> Psychedelic Slut Monkey. Can you explain why you've chosen that specific title? Uh, basically, because it don't mean a damn thing. It has absolutely <laughs> no meaning. <laughs> Yeah, There's another style, song uh, that's going to be on that album called Hanging On To Yesterday. It has no meaning. Uh, basically, uh, my concept behind uh, the song Hanging On To Yesterday, which is yet to be heard, uh, but All-American Psychedelic Slut Monkey, uh, <laughs> I wanted to actually, uh, especially the song, have a song that was about nothing let the people uh, interpret the meaning of that song which might, would make the album title and uh, another song an interactive song that the audience could uh, uh, listen to and dictate themselves what it means to them right. that's awesome Lloyd, I'm fucking inspired as fuck right now <laughs> he loves the album title so much it's such an original Cool. I love the fact that it means nothing, but it's it's such a crazy title that you're just it like. Means well, hold on. Yeah, you, you, well, it you, sparks you're conversation. Of it. That's what that's what makes it special. It's uh, uh, it's an it's like an interactive thing. It's like you um, I'll let whoever the listener is decide what that song or that album title means to them. And oh, I think that's a tactic. That I love. My fans that listen to my music, this is my gift to you. Listen to it and you decide what it means to you. That's awesome. You know what's cool about that, though, is that if by you not having a reason for the song, people can gravitate and pull to it for their own meanings, and they don't feel, like, held back by that. So when you tell them, yo, what do you think it means? That gives them all the power to like the song more. I like that. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of songs that I have noticed that I've listened to over the years uh, they'll have certain words that mean something to me and will take me back to a moment in time that won't really have anything to do with what the true writer wrote, but that's the way music goes. Uh, so as, uh, just as a kind of a gift uh, to the people who uh, kind of enjoy listening to my music, I just gave them the choice and opportunity to say, hey, this is for you. You decide what you want to mean to you, you know? Yo, Boogie so, Pop for president, bro. There we go. That's it. There we go. Boogie, well, I see. If Boogie Pop becomes president, uh, there's going to be about uh, a few billionaires and uh, some heads of corporations, amongst other people. Damn! The uh, th they're going to the guillotine. All right, well. <laughs> back in the United States, uh, we do the rightful thing. We put your head in the guillotine. Hell yeah. So Boogie, are you I, I do. Sure you won't be as a president. I want to play. I want to play. Uh, play filth next, but uh, I do want to ask you a couple other things. <clears throat> I, you've told me in the okay. past about um, the the psychiatric the psychiatric stuff. I don't think a lot of people are, are familiar from our channel as far as the. Uh, yeah. Can you can you can you go into that that story for us? Uh, when uh, I was committed to a psychiatric place when I was fourteen. <laughs> Is that the one? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and there, you place. had you had some specific stories about while being there. Do you want to know why I was there or the story? What, whatever, there? whatever, whatever you whatever you'd like to share. Well, they put me in there because I shot a guy when I was fourteen. Boogie. Because I don't like bullies, and uh, 
it, you know, it was not a wise decision that I made, but that's what I done. It didn't kill him or nothing, but that's what I did. And uh, by technically, by law, I shouldn't have been incarcerated till uh, the age of 21. But they put me in that facility because uh, I'm thinking they had like a program to where they wanted to, the state or something wanted to try to rehabilitate certain people. So that's where they put me at. It was like a program thing. So I was only in there nine months. Isn't that isn't that the start of how your guitar playing career kind of came about though? Like when once you got out of there, you met some buddies. Yeah, uh, it was. Um, uh, I wanted I play I played a little bit of guitar before that, but uh, uh, they had a summer program. See, their their what their uh, thing was was not to punish us, but to try to rehabilitate us and make us. Uh, you know, citizens, because we was uh, considered a threat and danger to society. So somehow or another, whoever, what entity was in charge, decided, well, let's try to rehabilitate these young men and see if it works, I guess. But uh, I had a summer job, and I worked real hard, and uh, I was able to buy my own amplifier and my guitar, which they allowed me to have there. And... Uh, some of the first songs that I learned was like uh, Stairway to Heaven. I mean, this is old school, BG, you know. Uh, Stairway to Heaven and then uh, Black Sabbath, Iron Man and stuff like that. But as long as I kept my nose clean, I could have my amplifier in my uh, room and uh, play some guitar. Hell yeah. But Hell I yeah. had to go to work. Uh, I had to have a job and work and earn that. For sure. Uh, I'm going to play Filth, and then if you're down to review a couple artists with us, we'll I'll still play some more of your music and ask you some more questions as well. I am curious, though. Boogie, I've never asked you this. What is your favorite movie of all time? Just out of curiosity. I want to see if you know some trivia about your favorite movie. You might win a prize. Wow. Wait a minute. You're asking me trivia about myself? No, no, no. Oh, I, no. I want to know. What's your favorite movie? And that movie will dictate the questions we ask you so you can win a prize. What's your favorite movie? Hold on, yeah. Well, shit, now I, won't, I don't want to get him all tricked. I'm going to have to think of something. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a second to think about it. You can think about it. I'm going to play Phil. Uh, Blade Runner. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play Phil. Yeah. Blade Runner Heard. Give me a second. Yeah. Boogie Pop Assassin with Filth off of Tears of Gasoline. <laughs> Boogie, are you prepared, sir, for your Blade Runner trivia? Okay, yeah. Is there any way we could get some trouble up? There's a band playing next uh, door in the studio. Yeah, let me fix and we're the... having. A, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Yeah, let me fix the volume on. Yeah, the I think if the treble was up a little bit, here, let, I could hear uh, BG a little bit. Better. Okay, right here. Let about BG that talk. Base, about that here, give check, me check, check, BG. check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, I mean, four. I sit right there close to here. Yeah. Uh, Mike, check. One, two, three, four, five. I'll get close right up on you. How's yeah, that? Is this here, okay? Get over here. I can get hear here. you better. There we go. And then you can stop me on this trivia because I got a feeling I'm in some trouble. I got an easy one. I got an easy one for you. What was Harrison Ford's character's nickname? I'm sorry. What was Harrison Ford's character's name, his complete first and last name, in Blade Runner? What was his name? Well, now, Harrison Ford, uh, see, now, you caught me at a bad time because, uh, uh, he shot the replicants, uh, Harrison, good God Almighty, see, they got me in a heart, rock in the heart. How much time do we have? Where are my glasses? If, ch if, cha if chat beats you to it, if chat beats to it, with Violet. Hell yeah. Uh, uh. What'd you guys think of that one? Okay, uh, now what's the question? <laughs> there was no question, he was just one. Digging it, digging it, bro. Okay, um... <laughs> the, the artist was very talented. The musicianship was very talented. But it made me very damn nervous. Why you say that? I and anything that scares me... 
And I know it'll scare easy. I'll give it a thumbs up too. Hell yeah. Boogie, do you know any riddles? I know riddles. No, I know a lot of damn riddles, but <laughs> you don't want them answers. I have a riddle that was stumped You him. don't want them answers. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, hey, let me yeah. give a riddle that was stumped him. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I have a riddle for you. The manager here has a good riddle for you. What kind of bird does not make a sound? What kind of bird? This one. This? Yes, you got it right. That is correct? Oh, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, hell hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I literally just took a guess. I did not know that one. That's the whole time. Yeah, I thought that right. was people just telling me hello on the highway. <laughs> oh, my. You were surprised. No, I thought you did, they were waving number one. Number one, Boogie <laughs> number one. That's what I was thinking. Boogie, when, when you said that you had, had plans to go in the studio at a later date, do you have a tentative time frame on when you are going to go start, start your tracking? Okay. Um... Uh, well, I'm gonna have to ask my management. Um, well, here. Like me. <laughs> well, we're planning to do it by end of this year because right now we're there. Right now we're trying to get every the live set even more perfected and better and and better and better. So then that way he is all ready to get the demo itis out of the way. So then once the demo itis is done, things will be the end of the year. Cool. Okay. Yeah. See, I've got I've got two demons I've got to battle. I've got to. Uh, uh, I've got to do, uh, you know, I fall under no dictation of any record label. The only people I work with is my production company and management. And uh, God bless them. They've helped me out a great deal. And uh, and uh, right now we're working together on projects, but right now we're working on tour. And then I got to get these uh, uh, songs out at the same time and the album. And that costs a little bit of dollars. It costs money, uh, but I'm working on that. So uh, I kind of—that's what they're for. They just tell me what to do and when to do it. Sometimes, you know. But yeah, we're working real hard on the music. And we, matter of fact, we've been playing on some, and it's been sounding good. If anybody thinks that Tears of Gasoline was, eh, you, just wait till All American Psychedelic Slut Monkey comes out. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah! It is a complete. Uh, is it a complete coincidence that you both are eating and drinking from Wendy's? If anyone from Wendy's is watching, can we get a Wendy's sponsorship? <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, <laughs> you, you actually think Wendy's? You actually think there's soda pop in this? No, he he, he has a big frosty mug of like his favorite drink in the world in there. What is your favorite beverage? My favorite beverage. Oh yeah, I'll do a shot well, with you. I'll do a shot. Of <laughs> I'll do a shot with you right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now this is a cherry flavored vodka that my bass player prefers. You're my fucking oh, no. hero, dude. I'm, I'm oh, taking a shot God. right now with some whiskey just because you have the best <laughs> energy and vibe right now. Hell yeah. Uh, to be quite serious, my favorite beverages are. Uh, uh, Dr. Pepper, and uh, I really don't drink that much alcohol. I just uh, I just wait my bass player's alcohol for the hell of it. Uh, you know, uh, I'm just having fun with him. Uh, but I do drink a little bit of Arbor Miss wine. Uh, but Dr. Pepper wine a little bit now and then. I don't drink like I used to. Blackberry flavor. Blackberry Arbor Mist. Uh, but I drink a lot more Dr. Pepper, which I need to cut down on because it's hard on my stomach. And uh, water and nice. milk. Uh, and that's it. But sure. uh, really no hard liquor, no beer, uh, no drugs. They, you know, they, the, you know, the psychiatrists, they tried to put me on them for years. They didn't do no damn good. I don't need their damn drugs or anybody else's. I am drug free. Uh, Only drug is his music. That's Let's it. go. There you go. Yeah. I can dig it. Now, if they come up with a with a drug that can make me feel nice or make me happy, then I'll take it. So hey, far, that happens. Sometimes I'll show you. Some the pharmaceutical yeah. company yeah. fails me. Name it. We'll, 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 Boogie. We'll, uh, what's one? What is one other song of yours that you would like us to play today? The Assassin, Paper Flowers. Yeah, right. Tears of Gasoline, the title track. Which what is one other song off of Tears of Gasoline that you would like us to play? 
Oh, I'd love for you to play Pissing on the Beast. Have you played that already? Yeah, we. you told me yeah. to switch that one initially. So uh, maybe we could do Assassin or Paper Flowers or or the title track. I've been about filth half to death. How about Break the Damn? Nah, man, I've been... Those radio stations up there in England, that's all they play is uh, Break the Damn Chains. Oh, uh, oh, this is the first one I learned. It's all well, uh, filth, Break the Chains. Um, Come on. My lord, goodness. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I know it's a little bit slower of a song. It doesn't, it's uh, more of a mood. Uh, the Assassin, maybe. Uh, the assassin would be cool. Let's play that. Let's play that. Yeah. We'll play it. The Assassin from The Assassin himself. Yeah, one of my favorite out of all of them. Hell yeah. Lloyd, what other questions? <laughs> What other questions do you have uh, for the band? I, I want to know everything about this man. Uh, can you write a book? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> if we need a book well, about not... the history of the Boogie Pop Assassin. I do have a real question. When did you realize in your life that you had this voice and like this kind of character in you? And when did you start expanding on it? Like, when did you realize you could do this? The, the voice. I mean, you, you mean that? raspy crap that uh, try to fake off his vocals. I just mean, you seem like a dude that's seen a lot and done a lot and just get involved in a lot. Like, when did you realize you had like a passion and like just this voice for singing? Like, when did that hit you? Uh, well, I love to sing. Uh, and I know I don't sing like other singers, but I'm going to do it anyway, as long as it's in key and people enjoy it. Uh, I always love singers like Dill Thompson, The Bride. They're a Christian heavy metal band. Great growly, grungy voice. Ronnie James Dio. Uh, oh, yeah. Even Janis Joplin. Uh, I always like that growl and that, yeah, in that voice. Yeah. And uh, Motorhead. Yeah, I know I've been, I've been accused of that. And I like him. And, uh, you know, but I always like the growl. And I really didn't do it started out on purpose it just kind of uh it's like uh i couldn't actually it's like how do you get this growly voice and singing key at the same time and right. then mix it up so it, it's still a struggle Should I mention that? I hope you, like, yeah uh yeah like okay the, here's the a tears of gasoline yeah, album. the tears of gasoline album i want to tell you when i took him to the studio for the first time he did he sounded like a southern boy but when I reformed him, he came out. I'll kiss my redneck eyes. Well, yeah, <laughs> I helped him enunciate because he didn't enunciate. So when I helped him enunciate, like, everyone can understand him in the studio, and they go, okay, he got it now. Yeah. Before he didn't enunciate, he just enunciated, like, Tennessee talk. <laughs> if you didn't have your manager, how far do you think you would be, Boogie? I, I, I like your manager. Uh, oh, At least well. still in Knoxville. I'd still be in Knoxville, uh, but yeah, I owe a lot to uh, Misty. She's she's a wonderful human being. She really is. Misty, you're uh, beautiful. Think, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, she's helped me out a great deal. Uh, like I like I, the stories go, you know, I had wrote those songs for Tears of Gasoline. It took me five years, and I could not find the musicians to go in the studio with me to do them. It was, it was yeah, Misty Rose Fields right. who got them for me and brought right. me in Detroit. Right. The musicians we got on the guest star on the album, we got... Oh, yeah, I need to talk about one yeah, of them. Yeah, we're going to do something here. Is Jason Harless Jr., which you guys might not know who Jason Harless Jr., but he's the current... We're not legally allowed to say that. Yes, we are. Well, <laughs> I'm allowed to, but you're okay. not. Okay, all right. Well, Jason yeah, Harless Jr. Is, the, is the, the drummer that's touring with Ted Nugent currently. Oh, wow. Drums. Wow. Um, and then we also got the late Tony Strat Thomas, which yeah. is George Clinton's guitar player, playing a lot of the leads and a lot of the bass on the album, which it was, he, uh, he was originally going to come in the studio to do bass, and he's like, hey, I, I love the assassin so much. I'm gonna put lead guitar on this. And Boogie was like floored, like he was an assassin. Like he was like floored by a well known musician as him for George Clinton and the Parliament Funk wanted to play that song so badly. So That's awesome. Because, yeah, because this is really a true story. Tony was a good friend of mine. He just passed away recently of a heart attack. Dying. And he 
and he ended up like saying, I want to play on this album so badly. I can feel the vibe like he's coming across. And he came in the studio and did it. It was like his brother from another mother. They both wear top hats. They enjoyed the same kind of vibe. And it was like a match made in heaven. It was really was, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's a, you know, uh, the, the song The Assassin, what you just heard, I want you to play that because Tony Strat's playing the, uh, the, the lead guitar. And uh, he volunteered for that. And you got to remember, I'm a I'm a Southern boy from Tennessee, and uh, and I used to in the 1970s, late 70s, early 80s, I would uh, listen to Parliament Funkadelic and George Clinton from time to time. And then years later, when I had their guitar player saying, "Man, I really like that song. I, I'd like to play lead guitar on it," and I'm thinking to myself like. Uh, yeah, like how much money is that going to cost me? I'm not going for that. No, no, I'll I'll do it. No, I love the song. I, I feel the vibe. I really oh, want to yeah. do this. Man, that made me feel on top of the world. So uh, I really owe a debt of gratitude to Tony Strat Thomas for uh, coming in the studio with me here in Detroit, Michigan, and help me out with that. Right, and then one thing about him, he was one of those guys that was very humble, and he was like a friend of mine. He would gladly do anything for me kind of thing because he's always been my friend and when I told him I have this client from Knoxville that doesn't have any musicians would you like to help with this he's like hey where can I sign up he was very down to earth of doing that that's and awesome you're from Tennessee I am from the East Detroit I'm living in Detroit, Detroit and then Boogie you're from Tennessee yeah see I'm from uh, me and Ben we're from Tennessee uh, but uh, our production and management company are here in Detroit so basically, my music business is here in Detroit, even though I'm a, a Tennessean. That makes sense, because you know? you're the only 10 I see. Oh! oh! <laughs> <laughs> Got it. You Got it. Thank you. Uh, you win the prize. I don't know who you are, but Dad, <laughs> damn it, you're running for president. You my win book. the prize. Let's you, you... run for president! <laughs> Hell yeah. Boogie, we but, got time. You know, so anyone... We right, got time. Like, you know, and when when Boogie reached out to me, like, what was it like, almost five, four or five years ago? No, it was about six. No, it was eight years ago. Eight years ago, he, yeah. you know, he was like, "Hey, I have all these ideas for music. I need to get my stuff out there somehow. I don't know how, but well, can we make it work?" And I said, "Yeah, let's make it out of work." But it took a long time to get to where he's at now. And without my help, he would have gotten farther than he was. He would be just still stuck in the back hills of Tennessee somewhere, maybe in a gutter. We don't know. Well, you know, uh, and every strong man is a stronger woman. What happens? There you go. Asian Tennessee. Except for Boogie, we got we got Man, time for yeah. we have time for a couple more questions. Uh, I do want to ask you one particular one about about the new music that's coming uh, towards the end of the year. But you said that if we if we liked Tears of Gasoline. We'll really like the new stuff. What what could we expect that's different from the new stuff that's that is completely different than Tears of Gasoline? And second part to the question is, uh, do you think uh, similar bigger name musicians will be able to team up with you on this project, or have you kind of solidified this is my this is my team that's doing the whole new record with me? Okay, let's break those two up because they're going to confuse me, okay? Question one. Question one. I know what, where you're going, but yeah, question one. Uh, uh, tears again, or the, the All-American Psychedelic Slut Monkey. You want to know what? <laughs> you know I want to know about the it. All-American Psychedelic Slut Monkey. Uh, now, what's the question on that? He wants to know what, like, what you think about the the album. New album is going to sound different than Tears and Gas. Okay, well, the new album is uh, it's going to be a little bit more punchy and in your face. There's going to be more of an upbeat rhythm. Uh, I was in the Knoxville Songwriters uh, Association for quite a while. I've been writing songs on and off since I was a kid, and there's choruses. Uh, hooks and everything like that, melodies that get stuck in your head. Uh, but it's not going to be some, uh, you know, but it's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to rock. It's going to be heavier, but it's also going to uh, be more catchy, the lyrics. Cool. And uh, everything like that. You know, Tears of Gasoline, they say gets stuck in your head uh, uh, with the uh, chorus, but. Uh, all the songs on the All-American Psychedelic Slut Monkey, 
they're gonna get stuck in your head, but they rock hard. They're they're a bam, bam, bam. They're a punch in your face. You know, tears of gasoline oh, good, time. but it's, it, this is gonna be a little bit more raw, a punchy. It's gonna rock. Gonna cool. have that beat. To it. And then and then the second part to the question is uh, obviously Tony has passed an R.I.P. to him, but I I don't recall the uh, the other artist, the name of the other artist that you said. But uh, Jason Harless Jr. Okay. Yeah, he um, on the album Tears of Gasoline. Yeah, that's Jason Harless Jr. And he yeah. ended up with the drummer currently. He's fills in drummer for a live drummer for Ted Nugent. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. I was I was just seeing if you if you anticipated him doing anything on it, or if you're just gonna roll with your with your full time touring lineup as your uh, who's gonna lay no, down the track. He's, too, he, he's actually too busy doing Ted Nugent stuff to actually do commit to something like that. He actually ended up doing studio, he does session work too. So um, when he was on his off time from Ted Nugent, he ended up filling drums for us at the time because we didn't have a drummer at the time. Cool. So that's the only reason why. Hell yeah, Lloyd, we have time for one more question. Lloyd, do you want to send him off with uh, with one more final question real quick? In a perfect music world, Boogie, where do you want to see yourself? If you got to decide your future right now of how big it would be or like what kind of like path you could take with this, how far are you going, man? What would you like to see on like the Boogie tour? Like what would you make of this? Uh, how far do, how big do I want to get as an artist? Uh, I, and how, how far I really want to go? You want to know the truth on that? Do you yeah. Really? Yeah. Don't get naked right now, please. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Well, I'm not, okay, not going to okay. get naked. We want to keep people on your show, not run them off. <laughs> I understand this. Sure. No, but uh, being dead, dead serious, if I was big as I wanted to be, you have got to remember there's been great people, uh, uh, great artists, Martin Luther King Jr., a lot of people that people vitalized. They've been very powerful. They've had a lot of followers because they had a good uh, philosophy. Uh if I had that much uh, fame, I would take that power that I got along with the fame. And uh, no longer would Americans hate one another and fight one another and be divided. No longer would we see homeless people underneath the damn bridge without being fed. Uh, that's how far I would take my fame. Uh, we would all uh, take care of one another and accept one another as human beings. And uh, as far as uh, government goes, we'd be our own damn government, and the government's only job would be to govern its own damn self like it's meant to to start oh, no. with. That's where I would go for my fame. I, That's how love I, love I mean, <laughs> is that not the best not the answer I, we've, I, we've I, ever I gotten? That with all sincerity. The, I'm not joking on that, That's that's real. It's, a, it's, a, it's the best answer we've ever gotten regarding that question. I mean, people need to listen to the lyrics and uh, they need to listen to the actual lyrics on the uh, Tears of Gasoline album on uh, uh, Phil Pissing on the Beast and uh, Tears of Gasoline itself. And uh, it goes there. There's uh, some things that, uh, you know, are there that uh, they you really need to read it to understand it. And uh, all American psychedelic slut monkey, uh, that's going to be a powerhouse too. Hell yeah! Oh, well, bo well, boogie, we house. we greatly, greatly appreciate you joining us, brother. It is always a pleasure. You're one of got to be in the top three most entertaining guests I've ever had. Every single time you join, man, I appreciate you. Thank you guys uh, for just just being awesome, man. We we look forward. To the new album, which I I suppose will probably be released, possibly first or second quarter of 2023, is kind of yes. the okay. Cool. Yeah. When it is ready, please please feed us that material so we can jam the hell out of it. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna feed you our hearts. We're gonna feed your soul. It's only rock and roll. Only rock and roll, baby. Hell yeah, I love it. Hey, BG, I'd just like to say thank you so much. Uh, you have been such a blessing in my life, and I mean that Aww. with all sincerity. I would actually send that right back to you, sir. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, you're an amazing, amazing person in spirit, and uh, I wish you guys nothing but success, for real. 
Uh, I, I love chatting with you, man. Always, always a good time for sure. Hell yeah. Sure. Y'all going to sure. make out now or what? Can we just get it over with? <laughs> you guys make out with those YouTube screens. We'll, I hope we'll you share a spliff, a spliff with you someday. Here yes, me. please, please, please. Uh, I think my bass player is wanting to day. smoke with you a little bit. I don't know what that means, uh, you know. <laughs> Hell yeah. We got to do rotation on screens, but we'll definitely rotate with you. You know I'm with it. You know I'm with it. Brother, you... Bob is, Brother Bob is here, too. You know, you Brother know, Bob! Brother Bob. Hell yeah, Brother Bob. What's up? <laughs> You guys enjoy the rest of your day, but I appreciate this so much. Uh, stay safe on the road when you when you do go on tour. And uh, l again, let us know when the new tunes are ready. We're ready to play it as soon as it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the Boogie Pop Assassin! Yeah, hell yeah! Thank you so much. Hell yeah. You guys be careful out there.